Let's see how we can show our nav meshes in game. This is a great debugging tool and also has some interesting gameplay applications. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become reality by helping you show your nav mesh in your game. Sometimes you just need to see the nav mesh, either for debugging, to help your player understand something, or you can do some cool ground shader effects with it. The key thing we need if we want to show this mesh is calculating the triangulation. If you've watched the AI series for a long time, you know we've used this a bunch of times, usually related to spawning enemies. But we can do more than that with the triangulation. We can actually build a mesh from that triangulation. It comes with three parts. First is vertices that we've used a bunch of times. Those are the individual vertices that make up the mesh. The indices, which used with the vertices, tell us which triangle should be created. And third is the areas. We haven't talked about these before, but what they do is help us understand which indices are associated to which navigation area. Meaning, from the calculated triangulation, we can tell which particular triangles of the nav mesh are walkable or are water or whatever. That's a powerful piece of information that we can use for more than just showing the nav mesh. But for today, what we'll do is color the different areas so it looks more like what we see in the editor. We'll start today simply showing the nav mesh with a single material. Then, because the nav mesh surface allows us to have different nav meshes built for different agents, we'll see how we can support showing the different ones of those. Then finally, we'll show the areas as well. There's an interesting limitation around that that we'll talk about whenever we get into showing those areas. In our scene, you can see we have a nav mesh and three potential nav mesh surfaces. We have different area types where this inner circle is labeled as mud and the inside circle of that is labeled as water. These are configured in the navigation window as mud and water that have higher area costs. The rest of the scene is just walkable. If we visualize only a nav mesh, we can see the different colors for each different area. Blue is normal, this kind of pink color is the mud, and then green is water. We obviously can't just turn on this visualization within the runtime, so let's create a script called nav mesh visualizer to see how we can show the same nav mesh while our game is playing. In a nav mesh visualizer, it'd be convenient to be able to allow toggling whether we want to see or not see the visualization. So we'll do a public bool show visualization and set it to be true by default. We'll also define a private material visualization material and a private vector three generated mesh offset that we'll set to be slightly above wherever we generate this mesh. We'll do this by generating a new game object as a child of this game object. So we'll also define a private game object mesh visualization and we'll assign that on start. This new game object needs to be able to render a mesh, so we'll add the components of mesh render and mesh filter. We also need a mesh. So we'll do mesh nav mesh equals new mesh. Anytime that we want to know what kind of triangles exist for a nav mesh, we can do nav mesh triangulation equals nav mesh dot calculate triangulation. This gives us which vertices and which indices are related to which area. The simplest way to do this so we can just see a nav mesh is to do nav mesh dot set vertices, triangulation dot vertices, and nav mesh dot set indices, triangulation dot indices, mesh topology triangles, setting it to be sub mesh index zero. Now that we've built a mesh from our nav mesh, we can just set up the mesh filter to use this new nav mesh and assign a material to the mesh renderer. On update, we'll just set the game object to be active based on whether we want to show the visualization or not, and we'll set the nav mesh position based on our generated mesh offset. It's important to note that the nav mesh triangulation is always centered around the origin, so our mesh visualization needs to be also centered at the origin. We're applying a small y offset right now, so it looks similar to what we see in the editor. In the editor, I'll create a new game object and attach our nav mesh visualization to it. I'm using the URP. I'm using a standard URP lit shader that's transparent with a blue transparent color. We'll assign that as our visualization material and click play. Cool, we can see that nav mesh just like what we saw in the editor. There are two problems with this though. One is we only get one mesh. We don't see like the sub mesh indices. Like we can't see that the area back here is mud and we can't see the area inside of that is water. Everything looks with the same material. The second problem is with the nav mesh surface, we can have multiple nav meshes per agent type. For example, if I bake these other two nav meshes, which I've configured just using in the navigation agents, I've created three different enemy types. The only difference in each of these nav mesh surfaces is changing the agent type. Now we can see three nav meshes, and if I re-click play, we can see all three of them, but it kind of looks funky, and there's no way to distinguish which one is which. It's all baked into the single mesh. 
Let's tackle the multi nav mesh problem first, and then we'll look at the areas. So I'm gonna make a new script called the multi nav mesh visualizer. And I'm actually gonna start with exactly the same code as we have here, and we're gonna tweak that. To support multi nav meshes, we need to know about the surfaces. Unfortunately, the triangulation never knows the difference between the area type. It's not really a good way to distinguish which one's which. You just get a bunch of vertices, a bunch of indices, and areas, but it doesn't tell you which agent type is associated with which triangle. Unfortunately, the only way I found to do this then is to bake the nav meshes at runtime based on the nav mesh surface. So we'll have a reference to all the surfaces that we want to have visualized with that private nav mesh surface array of surfaces. We'll change our start to awake. We'll keep our root game object as it was, and then we'll iterate over all of the surfaces. We'll keep all the code we had before still in this for each loop. And at the top of that loop, we're going to do nav mesh remove all nav mesh data and then surface.build nav mesh. What this does is guarantees we only have a single nav mesh surface data available whenever we calculate the triangulation. We'll make a new game object. We'll do everything we did before. We want to add the mesh render and the filter to the visualization game object, not the root one anymore. Then we want to parent this game object underneath that root object. The last thing we should do here is to rebuild all of the nav mesh surfaces because we've removed all the nav mesh data. So at the end of awake, we will have our original nav mesh built for each agent already. Let's go back to the Unity editor, attach the multi nav mesh visualizer, we'll disable the previous nav mesh visualizer, and attach those three nav mesh surfaces. We then click play. So we can still see all three of them, but now we have a discrete game object per agent type. So we can disable them and see which one looks like what. We still can't see on the nav mesh the different areas though. Let's take a look at what we can do there. You'll remember earlier I said that the triangulation has per area which indices are affected. That's under the triangulation.areas array. Basically it's giving us which Particular triangles are mud, water, walkable, jump, whatever nav mesh areas you have. It's telling us which triangles are each of those by defining the indices. What we can do is iterate over all the areas, and for each index we have there, we can add the indices to this list, and we'll have per area in a dictionary which indices are related to it. That'll give us all the triangles so we can build our mesh based on that instead of just taking all of them. That probably sounds a little bit confusing if you've never done mesh generation before, so let's walk through it and I think it'll make a little bit more sense. So first we need a dictionary of int to list int that we'll call area indices. We'll then iterate over the triangulation areas and we'll check if the area indices doesn't contain this one, then we're gonna add it. And the areas are an index of zero through N based on the areas you have defined in a navigation window. And we'll make sure to add a new list there. From this point, we want to access the list of indices for this particular area and add in the indices to that list. That's area indices indexed by triangulation dot areas indexed by I. That's going to give us like zero, one, two, three, four, something like that based on our areas we have defined in the navigation window. We're going to add triangulation dot indices. And because triangles are three, we're going to do three times I, three times I plus one and three times I plus two. And remember because math, we do multiplication first. So we do three times I regardless. Then we add one and add two to give us our full triangle. Now we have a dictionary per area which indices are related. So on our mesh, we potentially have sub meshes now. So we should tell our mesh that it has that number of sub meshes. Each area will be a sub mesh and we'll assign a different material to each one. We can still set the vertices of the mesh. Those don't change. It's just the indices in which sub mesh each indice is associated to that changes. So instead of just setting the nav mesh indices to be triangulation indices, we need to go per area and set them to be each sub mesh. So we'll define an int index equals zero and iterate over the key value pairs in our area indices. And we'll do nav mesh dot set triangles based on the value of our key value pair here, making sure to set the index, meaning the sub mesh index would start at zero. And then for each iteration, we go up by one. It's then important to set a different material for each one of these because we want to be able to see the difference between each area. Otherwise, they're just doing a lot of extra processing for nothing. To do that, we're going to dynamically create a new material based on the universal render pipeline slash lit shader. If you want to use a different shader, you can just replace universal render pipeline slash lit with whatever shader you want. 
Remember that shader.find has to exactly match the name of a shader, otherwise it's going to give you an unknown shader error. I'll pick a random color to be a new color with random RGB values between 0 and 1 and an alpha of 0 0.4, which is around 100 on the 0 to 255 scale. Make sure you include Fs on at least one of the numbers on your random ranges, otherwise you'll get black materials. We'll set the material color to be this color, and then I'm going to do some little bit of magic. I don't really want to get into how to make universal render pipeline shaders be transparent. I did a video on that not too long ago about how to fade out objects using the universal render pipeline. I've got links in the description and a card on the screen right now if you want to learn more about how to fade in and out and swap material properties. But that's this magic right here, setting a bunch of properties basically just to make it be transparent. We define this material, but we never really do anything with it. And in Unity, we want one material per submesh. So wherever we defined our nav mesh submesh count, we'll also define a new material array to be the same size. At the very end of our for each loop over here, we'll set materials index by index to be this particular material right before we increment index. The last step, instead of setting a shared material here, we're going to set all of the materials. The visualization material is no longer needed, so we'll remove that, and that should be okay. We come back and click play, we would expect to see each area highlighted in a different color. Well, notice it didn't really work. We still see only one color happening here. If we open up the debugger, we can see the triangulation areas only has index zero, meaning only the walkable area is considered. That's why we're only getting one material. There's something weird when we bake with a nav mesh surface. The calculate triangulation doesn't properly separate stuff out based on the areas. We can tell this is only affecting the nav mesh surfaces by going to the old way of baking using the navigation window. I've configured these objects to work basically the same so we get the mud and the water by tagging those in the object panel. If we bake it, we can see we get those areas still. So we come in here in the debugger again, using the old way of baking, we see the triangulation has more indices and they have some that are actually non-zero. So they're properly finding triangles that are associated with each area. I've already logged a bug with Unity and I hope they're gonna get back to me about why this is happening with the nav mesh surface since it's a much more powerful component. It'd be really nice if the triangulation was calculated properly. I hope this video helps you understand how you can visualize a nav mesh in-game by dynamically generating a mesh for nav mesh surface. It is a really unfortunate bug that's there that the nav mesh triangulation when calculated from a nav mesh surface generation doesn't include those areas. And I've also tried this on more recent versions such as 2023 alpha and 2022. Neither of these, even including the higher version of the nav mesh components, made any difference in whether this worked or not. If Unity replies and fixes this bug, there'll be a pinned comment indicating that this is working for Daphne surfaces, but of course you can always just try it in your own editor and see if it works. That's really unfortunate because there's a lot of cool stuff we could do with that by giving more contextual information in the nav mesh itself using nav mesh modifiers and nav mesh modifier volumes and some of those would only affect particular agents but hopefully you need will take a look at that and get it resolved and if you want to support this channel you can go to patreon.com slash academy or click super thanks or join right here on youtube get your name up here on the screen and get a shout out the awesome tier at the awesome tier there's autumn k matt parkin ivan rulin iffy obelisk and dwarf and at the tremendous tier there's bruno bozic and at the phenomenal tier there's Andrew Bowen. Thank you all for your support. I am incredibly grateful.